Thank you, brother. Strong, strong truth that encourages and challenges the heart. The significant thing that I wanted to exhort you about from this text, and not, not just from this text alone, but what is significant about the revelation of God is that it is a revelation from God that he's sovereign over all of these things. Whatever the circumstances are, whatever the conditions are, God is at work, and he's revealing to his people what he is doing. We live at a time and a place where we have this full revelation now that's in Christ Jesus. I regret very much I missed the meeting in the text of the mysteries of the gospel uh, Wednesday evening. And uh, I've looked at the list of things that our brother uh, recorded for us there in the things that he'd written. God is revealing these things, and he's showing his people that the circumstances and the events of the earth in whatever age, in whatever generation, whatever the politics, whatever the social issues, whatever the economy, are not outside his jurisdiction. He is watching over the earth. Right. Reminded that, you know, a, a capsule view of that is uh, Israel at Sinai or Israel in the wilderness. And they would uh, react against God in some way as if he didn't know what was happening. <laughs> and and uh, some kind of, of uh, punishment was inflicted upon them then. Whether it was... Uh, um, the sword of the Levites coming against those at the base of the mountain or the ground opening up and swallowing Kor, Dathan, and Abiram or the fiery serpent sent in among them. God was watching and he was dealing with them accordingly. Now, of course, the view that we have here, this broadest of views that we get that were, was shown to John when he was taken up through the open door in heavens and shown these things. This is the broadest view that we have of these things, of God managing and watching over all the affairs of the earth is a great comfort, source of great peace to us, especially those of us who have been, uh, I don't know whether deeply entrenched is the word to use or not, but from my perspective, uh, I was I was uh, deeply engaged in the in in the things that we're speaking about here, and it was not easy to come out. I knew that there was trouble. I knew that there was all kinds of problems, and I surely had no solution whatsoever. Just you're just in there plowing away, trying to do the best you can, and making no headway, not a, and and almost swallowed up and taken away yourself. And then at the right time in the right place, God opened a window, so to speak, Amen. opened a door and said, come up here. Amen. And he has granted us this space, this time. He's granted us fellowship with one another and many others whom we know who have heard and have received us. He's granted us places to, to speak of these things that we have seen. He's granted us people who are willing to listen now, not all of them are in the same place, as has already been said this morning, but they are at different places. Some of us have traveled to the other side of the world and spoke to those who are willing to hear these things and want to know more, have questions and inquiry, and are glad to consider these things. Because people that we associated with here, they, were, they weren't even interested enough to ask a question. They weren't interested enough to listen. They often went to sleep or cut us off. Because they had other things that were more important. They give you this little space of time, but you knew they didn't listen. <laughs> they couldn't talk about the things that you were talking about. They had no, uh, no inquiry into them. They didn't want them to be enlarged. There, could, there, there was no uh, reciprocity. There was no giving or receiving about these things. And so when the opportunity came, we came out. 
and, and God has granted us to be drawn together mm -hmm. then to speak about these things freely, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, engage in this exchange that we have one with another, to drink freely yeah. of the water of life, the well of God's salvation, to drink freely of it. So that's the exhortation then, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Do continue doing what we are doing. And don't be afraid. When the opportunity arises, don't be afraid to speak about these things. God has revealed this. That's right. That all of the things that we see in the religious world are under the watchful eye of the Most High. And he's spoken about them again and again and again and again. Our brother very skillfully cited those places from centuries before John that those things were spoken about, that some of those things were lived out in the lives of Daniel, Amen. Ezekiel, Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael. They were in Babylon. And then Ezra and Nehemiah came out and gave themselves then to restoring the things that God had kept. Mm -hmm. That God had kept. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what we're doing. We're rejoicing these things that have been kept. Yeah. They've been there. Others down through the centuries have rejoiced in them to discover them from time to time. Right. We read some of their writings now. We have those things. I've been reading for some time now there's some of the writings of Calvin. Others, we mentioned Martin Luther. Mm -hmm. Others like that. Mm -hmm. Who rediscovered these things that were not lost at all. They were just covered up. They were just Amen. kept hidden somewhere Amen. until the time. So we rejoice in these things, brother, a very skillful delivery and presentation of, uh, of these things that are, that are not easy to speak about. I've never attempted to speak about these things myself in this manner. And uh, well done, well done. Thank you very much. You all, all others have some comments this morning then.